Southern Palestine health authorities warned that the few hospitals still operating could close in the next 48 hours due to the lack of resources. In the Netherlands, the International Court of Justice began the hearing requested by Guyana to debate the suspension or not of Venezuela's consultative referendum on the Esequibo. The Venezuelan vice president described Guyana's request as unprecedented and lacking any legal basis. And in Mexico, members of the LGBTQ plus community marched for the death of magistrate Jesus Osiel Baena. Hello, welcome from the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Resu Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Palestine, health authorities warned that the few hospitals that are still open could close in the next 48 hours due to the lack of fuel because of the Israeli siege. According to the latest information, medical centers in the north of the Strip have already stopped working, including Al Shifa and Al Quds hospitals, the two largest in the territory. Also, the Palestinian Red Crescent announced on Tuesday that the only power generator at Al Amal Hospital, located in the southern city of Khan Yunis, was shut down, preventing medical personnel from continuing to treat patients. To date, more than 20 of the 35 hospitals in the Strip have been shut down since the beginning of the attacks on October 7th. More than 11,000 Palestinians have been killed in the ongoing Israeli shellings of Gaza. The World Health Organization on Tuesday insisted that moving the most vulnerable patients from Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza is an impossible task, adding that health facilities should never be in the line of fire. The reason we said that people can't be evacuated is, first of all, they, as I mentioned in my earlier answer, the people in the hospitals were very vulnerable, very sick, so moving them was uh, a an impossible task and you are asking doctors and nurses to move people knowing that that would kill them uh, and again why would you need to move them a hospital should never be under attack a hospital is a place a safe haven this is agreed under international humanitarian law more than 100 Palestinians killed by Israel were bur buried in a makeshift grave in the Al Shifa compound in the city of Gaza due to difficulty to bury them. Mexico and administrative teams, with the help of several Palestinian refugees, dug mass grave in the corridor of the Al Shifa compound to bury at least 170 of the bodies of Palestinians killed during the siege and bombardment by the Israeli occupation forces. According to the health authorities, this measure was implemented due to the level of decomposition of the corpses, which had already been mutilated by stray dogs. They also stated that at Al Amal Hospital in Canyonis, more than 90 patients are at risk of death due to the fact that the only power generator stopped working on Tuesday. On Tuesday, local media in Palestine highlighted that due to the fuel shortages, cab drivers in the Gaza Strip are forced to use vegetable oil to fill their tanks so they can continue working. The cars are using vegetable oil, and our cars at the end of this period of war. We need a new engine or pump reparations, and this would cost between 4,000 and 5,000 shekels. And this is a burden, but we have no choice, as we are taxi drivers, and we need to earn money for our children. We suffer from the smoke below and from the vegetable oil. People are also suffering from the lack of places to stay. As you know, Rafa is a small city. Most of the people are living on the roads. The price of renting is expensive. On Monday, Israeli forces attacked a convoy of journalists passing through southern Lebanon. Local media in Lebanon reported that the Israeli occupation army bombed a convoy of vehicles traveling in the city of Jarun. The attack left several vehicles burned and Al Jazeera News Network reported that one of its photographers, Isam Mawasi, was injured in the attack. In the meantime, the Palestinian authorities denounced that media workers have been permanently targeted by the Israeli occupation forces with a total of 51 journalists killed by Israel in the Gaza Strip. The director of Al Mayadeen also indicated that the decision to silence the media was a political decision taken by Israel to confront the influence of the news platform in Palestine and the Middle East. 
la decisión de prohibir a Al Mayadin the no decision to ban Al Mayadin was not a decision taken no in a natural way it was not through a statement by the Ministry of Telecommunications or through the media or anything like that Imagine that the cabinet, which represents the highest authority to take political, security, and military decisions, meets urgently for decisions related to national security. All this great team met, and one of the points of discussion was the al Mayadin chain. Of course, it was a heavy and big file, almost approved. It was like the campaigns of incitement, distortion, defamation, and threats, the same way our colleague Hannah was threatened and intimidated. In addition to this direct threats against us, this is the first time I say this, we have received threatening messages related to the urgent need to silence the voice of al Mayadin, which was present from the first moments of the Israeli aggression to Gaza. Which was firm in facing the occupation. So this is really decision was not a media decision. It was a political and security decision par excellence. They are confronting Al Mayadeen not only as a telecommunication channel, it has become an influential and strong channel in the heart of the Palestinian people. They are aware and know very well that the numbers show the level of credibility and influence inside occupied Palestine, in Gaza, in the West Bank, and also within the Palestinian diaspora. In this regard, Ghassan Ben Jedu denounced that Israel had started a war against free voices that tried to show the brutality of the genocide perpetrated by Tel Aviv against the Palestinian people. They are hysterical and disturbed facing the media in general and everyone who talks about what is happening, about the crimes either in Gaza or the West Bank or within the borders of 1948. But especially al Mayadin was bothering them. So they had to take the decision to shut us up but the strangest thing is that it is not only a decision of the Palestinian entity. What it means is that Israel will enter with the security forces into that area, to the West Bank. It will also close our offices and confiscate our cameras and equipment. It is a war. We consider it a war decision. We will continue to do our work without rest, without delay, and without backing down because we consider that now the situation does not require at this time to file lawsuits and contact international organizations. We will do it to safeguard our rights and to certify the crimes committed by the invader. But at the same time, this is not a priority now. We will go to a battle of public opinion based on the fact that al Mayadeen, with what it represents, not only as a channel but as a project and a vision, represents this big and fighting media community, of which Tel Azur, by the way, is a big part. That is what we want to say, that Israel wants to persecute the free voices, the free words, wherever they are, and that is why we are confronting Israel in the occupied lands and wherever it is. In the Philippines, more than 100 pro-Palestinian demonstrators were repressed by police officers in front of the U.S. Embassy in Manila. On Tuesday, hundreds of pro-Palestinian activists took to the streets carrying placards and banners in support of the Palestinian people. Police used riot shields to try to stop the march heading towards the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines, but were outnumbered by nearly 200 protesters. As of last Friday, more than 11,000 Palestinians, two-thirds of them women and children, had been killed. And like other countries, the Philippines are calling for an end to this genocide. Israel, Israel is being financed by the United States. The bombs that are dropped come from the United States. The bullets used against the Palestinians are from the United States. The drones used come from the United States. That country bears overwhelming responsibility for the humanitarian catastrophe that is now occurring in Gaza. The United States has not called for any kind of meaningful ceasefire that will prevent the carnage we are seeing. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back from the South. 
On Monday, President Luis Ignacio da Silva received a plane with 32 Brazilians and their relatives rescued from the Gaza Strip. The group, made up of 22 Brazilians, seven Palestinians residing in Brazil and three relatives, managed to leave Gaza after several frustrated attempts since the beginning of the conflict between Israel and Palestine. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mauro Vieira, indicated in a press conference in Brasilia that two people from the group, who were on the original list of 34 names for personal reasons, renounced to repatriation and decided to remain in Gaza. New arrivals recounted in person their experiences on the Israeli siege. What's happening there is a massacre. It's very difficult for you to understand what we are going through there. Bombardments dropped everywhere. My daughters were shocked, very sad. The first two weeks, we lied to them by saying bombs were fireworks from birthday parties, but we couldn't lie to them for much longer. For his part, the Brazilian president denounced the inhuman violence suffered by the civilian population and the terrorism perpetrated by both Hamas and Israeli state. 28 years old, I've seen a lot of brutality and violence. I've seen a lot of irrationality, but I have never seen such brutal and inhuman violence against innocents. Because if Hamas committed a terrorist act and did what it did, the state of Israel is also committing several terrorist acts by not considering that children are not at war. This Tuesday, the International Court of Justice began the hearing request by Guyana to debate the suspension or not of Venezuela's consultative referendum on the sovereignty of the Esequibo territory. Venezuelan Vice President Delcy Rodriguez emphasized that her attendance at the court is to defeat the pretensions of Guyana's judicial colonialism by using this court to stop the unstoppable. Rodriguez added that Guyana intends to manipulate the court to stop the referendum, which is sovereign failing to report their actions with the Southern Command and their military exercises. The Vice President said Guyana's request for provisional measures to stop the consultative referendum has no legal basis. Venezuela's delegation will appear on Wednesday to defend the holding of the consultative referendum on the Esequibo. Guyana never stops to amaze us. We are really very astonished because not only are there hairs of a territory that the United Kingdom stole from Venezuela, but also they inherited the lineage of imperialist and colonialist arrogance. They have asked the court in a kind of implementation of judicial colonialism. They want to turn the court into the instrument that will stop the consultative referendum of December 3rd. They have asked the court that the Venezuelan people should not vote, which is absolutely unprecedented, extraordinary, astro astonishing, barbaric. To us to come here to interfere in the internal affairs of Venezuela, of its internal constitutional order. Well, atrocities like that we had to listen to, but we have also heard how they have lied, how they have manipulated those beautiful rallies that our National Bolivarian Armed Force is doing together with the people on the streets, in the neighborhoods, in the towns, in the cities. For them, it is a threat when our National Bolivarian Armed Force constitution in hand is calling on our people to participate in the consultative referendum. What Guyanese government doesn't say, because we are aware of their fake victimized role, of those having plundered and robbed the territory of Venezuela, and now they are robbing the maritime territory, which is pending to be delimited. What they didn't say or mention are the joint, joint military exercises between the U.S. Southern Command and the Guyanese military forces. They didn't say anything about it, they didn't mention it, and how their bombastic statements, along with the Southern Command and the Pentagon, threaten and attack Venezuela. Nothing new. We already knew everything. They request, they insist on stopping the consultative referendum on December 3rd. Tomorrow, Venezuela will let crystal clear the stance of our people, of our nation. On December 3rd, all Venezuelans will cast their votes because it is an essential matter to defend our rights on the Guyana and Sequiba. The president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, held a meeting with the diplomatic corps and the group of friends created abroad in order to ratify Venezuelan historical rights over the territory of the eastern Guyana and Sequiba. 
The words of the Venezuelan head of state were transmitted via video conference to the representative of Latin American nation and the group of friends. During his speech, the head of state urged the diplomats to take the truth of Venezuela about the Esequibo to the nations and peoples of the world in all languages. The president assured that Venezuela must wage a historic battle in the face of the dispossession of the Esequibo territory claimed by the British Empire. The plundering of the United Kingdom that pretended over our territory. As you know, our country has lived through several uh, stages, very important, all of them, before the existence as a republic we had, uh, we practically, practically had, uh, of, had, had had over 300 years of colonialism on, in, our, in our America, in our Latin America. The president of the National Assembly, Jorge Rodriguez, denounced the intentions of the government of Guyana to attack the territorial integrity of Venezuela. The pretension that has existed historically since the birth of the most brutal empire that the history of humanity has known, the North American Empire, to attack the territorial integrity of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, just as in 1899 a supposed tribunal composed of foreigners, where Venezuela didn't have any type of representation, where they agree and commit a tremendous fraud that was later completely unveiled. At this moment, the so-called International Court of Justice is trying to commit a nonsense of incalculable proportions. Members of the LGBTQ plus community marched in Mexico City for the death of Magistrate Jesus Social Baena, who appeared lifeless this morning in Aguascaliente. Initially, protesters gathered at the capital to remember the renowned non-binary gender jurist. Then at the Plaza Nueva La Scala in Saltillo, family members held a visual in his name and to demand the clarification of the case. Similarly, in the main square of Aguascalientes, where Ociel Paena was in office, members of the LGBTQ plus community, among other members of civil society, held a rally to remember him and denounce the recent death threats suffered by the magistrate. As people of sexual diversity, we are heirs of the struggle that Jose has just inherited from us. We must not pass his death in vain and we must continue with the legacy he left us. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, there you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings, and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. A final short break, don't go away. Welcome back from the South. European Union defense ministers met in Belgium to discuss conditions for military aid to Ukraine. The meeting comes after the United States reported that 96 percent of the resources previously granted to the Kiev regime have already been used. In statements to the press, German defense minister Boris Pistorius admitted they would not be able to meet their goal of supplying 1 million projectiles and missiles to Ukraine by March next year. In view of the situation, the high representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs, Joseph Borrell, asked to give priority to Kiev in military industry contracts to help it in its conflict with Moscow. More than 100 rescuers are working for the third consecutive day to try to save 40 workers trapped on the ground in northern India who are still alive after a tunnel collapse under construction. The accident occurred early Sunday morning in a 4.5-kilometer-long tunnel under construction in the Himalayan state of Uttarakhand. Excavators began removing debris from the site on Sunday so that another tunnel could be drilled to rescue the workers. Rescue teams are pumping oxygen and also sending workers small rations, such as dried fruit, to feed them. The public infrastructure and highways company indicated that it is installing 90 centimeter diameter aluminum cylinders so that workers can use them as an evacuation route. 
Local media in Indonesia reported on Tuesday that about 200 refugees from Myanmar have disembarked in the western province of Aceh. Local Navy commander Andy Susanto confirmed the arrival of the crew from Myanmar and noted that some of them immediately fled inland. In the sense, the local authorities added that the Myanmarians are part of the Muslim Rohingya ethnic majority group and stressed that among them there are many women and children. Thousands of refugees from the Rohingya group risk their lives each year on long and costly journeys by sea, often in flimsy boats to try to reach Malaysia or Indonesia. For more, more than 2,000 Rohingyans are believed to have attempted the risky journey to Southeast Asian countries in 2022, according to the UN Refugee Agency. Nearly 200 Rohingyans died or went missing last year while attempting hazardous sea crossings, the agency estimated. And we have come to the end of this news brief. Before saying goodbye, we want to thank our Caribbean audience, especially the audience of Trinidad and Tobago. We are pleased to share our newscasts and contribute to provide an alternative news source of the latest world events. You can find these and many other stories on our website at terzoenglish.net. You can also join us on our social medias on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Terzo English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.